to see how strong this storm really was, take a look at the tree behind me. That's one of Five Star's roofs that flew off and landed smack down right in the middle of the tree. The trainer's job is to make sure that 20 amateur paddlers are having a great time, but most importantly, doing it safely. Quest to speak to the church pastor were refused. Office staff saying that he was tending to other business, but they did give us this statement, asking for prayer during this difficult time. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Leslie. Happy Spirits Day, everybody. We are live this morning in Minden High School, honoring the Crimson Tide for their amazing school spirit, as you can hear behind me. Tired of always riding back as a passenger, more women are... Biggest challenge for many Dillard students is finding a free outlet to keep your phone charged. These Huntington middle and high school track and field athletes say they can leave everything behind when it's time to get ready, get set, and go. But let's take a look at their competition this morning. Last week, it wasn't just about the rain. They all did that, but these guys came out so big, so loud on our NBC6 Facebook page. One of the most important things your family needs to take on a hunting trip this season is your hunter's orange. Wearing this could save your life. This line had formed way before the polls had opened at 6 a.m. Good morning, Leslie and Dan. As you can see behind me, this on-ramp onto uh, Interstate 220 is still shut down, and that is the case for all the on-ramps in Caddo and Bossier Parish. Boxing doesn't have to be about just pounding another person. It can be about a great cardio workout between you and a punching bag. Massive tires, the roar of the engines, there's nothing quite like a monster truck rally. When there's life after cancer, you get to embark on a brand new adventure. The Jennings get to play, have fun, and make up for lost time. A final decision from the Federal Aviation Administration will shut down air traffic control towers at regional airports across the country. This is bad news for two Arklatex airports. NBC6's Jade Cunningham joins us live in the Content Center with the latest. Jade, what kind of reaction are you having from folks about the FAA decision? Fierce weather may have knocked this Wascom business down, but it won't knock them out. I never would have thought it would ever happen again. Five Star Construction employees are back at work just hours after Thursday's storm hit with a vengeance. I was worried about if anybody got hurt or if anybody was even dead. Production manager Kyle Corey and his boss Joey Cox were working in the office when the winds suddenly picked up. Couldn't see nothing or anything. They ran to their cars to drive away, but couldn't see anything. So they crouched down and prayed. It lasted what felt like two minutes, and then uh, as soon as the rain slacked up, we got out of our cars, and you know, it's what you see now, which is not much left standing. To see how strong this storm really was, take a look at the tree behind me. That's one of Five Star's roofs that flew off and landed smack down right in the middle of the tree. The crazy thing is, this isn't the first time. This is video from the tornado that flattened the construction business back in 2010. And the last time it was much worse. I believe it was an F3 and it destroyed every single building out here. And just like last time, they're not missing a beat. It's been a week or two, we should have everything rebuilt back. They're already in the process of rebuilding again. It's not going to slow us down. We're used to it. We've been through it before, so we're just going to keep moving forward. Morgan Thomas, NBC6 News. A Tuesday morning protest ended peacefully when parents' demands to get back their children's bus service were met. And you telling me that they never rode a bus to that school? You can't tell me that. At first, Lashana Moore was furious. One week after her children's first day at J.S. Clark Elementary, she was told they no longer had a bus and would have to walk to school. I wouldn't be asking for a bus if they didn't have to cross the main street, which is 4th Street. She and other angry parents decided to protest outside the Caddo Parish School Transportation Office. Since we dropped our kids off at school. And district officials listened. Victor Monero with Caddo Schools shared the good news. Uh, looking at the situation, talking with the transportation director, we reassured those parents that their transportation will continue. For these parents, it all came down to their child's safe arrival at school and return home. And they believe the very best place for them was a school bus. We live in one of the highest crime area it is in Shreveport. We stay in Allendale. You don't know who's going to be coming out the bushes trying to get your child because they don't have their right mind. While the district blames a computer program for the bus being canceled, these mothers are proud that they stood up for their children and won. Morgan Thomas, NBC6 News. It's business as usual in Manny, but that doesn't mean their eyes and ears aren't open for the latest news. Everybody knows about it and it's, you know, 
it's kind of devastating to the whole town. The conversation at the downtown Tobacco Plus gas station isn't just about the cost to fill up. It's about the search for Tony Procell. Everybody who comes in the store is talking about it, and they're sad. Employee Linda Sparks says most people know the Procells and can't believe this is happening to someone they know. It's like something really bad happened in the place, and we don't know why or, you know, no rhyme or reason. There's also talk about the Natchitoches police officer now behind bars for the kidnapping. I don't think it's right for the uh, police officer to do what he does. He's setting a bad example for all the other uh, cops and people don't realize if they can trust the officers or not. This is not only a small but a tight-knit community and many folks say the most important thing is sending the family prayers and keeping hope alive. They're all trying to stay positive until the end. That everybody's hoping they're going to find him. He's going to come back safe. But that's getting harder to do. Is there still a lot of hope out there? It's like it's fading pretty fast. Morgan Thomas, NBC6 News. Homecoming excitement brings out the loudest <laughs> and the craziest school spirit at North DeSoto High School. Everybody getting together and, you know, making the most school spirit you can just so you can have a really good energy going into Friday night's game. Our week four winner of the NBC6 Spirit Stick shows us what being a Griffin is all about. It's so great. We have such a great family and we have so much spirit and so much pride. But what exactly is a Griffin? <laughs> Football player and drama club member Gunnar Curtis explains. A griffin is a mix between a lion and an eagle, and it's got the, uh, the head of an eagle and the body of a lion, a mythological creature that is powerful among all other creatures. Our NBC6 morning crew could be celebrating homecoming at your high school if you're our next Spirit Stick winner. Principal Bart Weaver has been on the job for nine years, and he's on a mission to create a bright future for every student. Everything that a small town has but everything that a large school has. Homecoming Queen Darby Smith describes the legacy of what it means to be a North DeSoto Griffin. It just means to have pride in your school and in your players and just to be the best student that you can be. Morgan Thomas, NBC6 News. I just remember they smile, they kindness. I know they're in good hands. I know this. Renee Blaylock never gets a break from missing her three teenage sons. People Seldom lose one child, but losing three, that's three times the heart and pain. Can't nobody know how you feel. Latrell, Latavin, and Ladarius Stewart, along with three siblings from another family, died during a summertime outing near Hamels Park on the Red River two years ago this week. I remember the day of the accident. I remember my son hugging me real tight. The news of what happened near this spot on the Red River spread quickly across the world. While the community here mourned the lives of six teenagers and did their best to support the family. Blaylock continues to rely on her husband, five surviving children, and her church to push through. You have to be strong, and I try to be strong. I have to pray through the day to get through the day. She feels the city of Shreveport and other organizations have exploited her family's loss trying to raise money for swim lessons especially since she doesn't believe that could have changed the outcome. And just by them knowing how to swim, they don't mean they're going to get out of there alive. And this could happen to you. You never know when something like what happened to us could happen to somebody else. Morgan Thomas, NBC6 News. It was a dark, rainy drive into the town of Haynesville. A little bit before 5 this morning, I found out the lights were off, and I said, oh, Lord. But no power, no problem. Golden Tornado fans are a force of nature. But when I got here, there were already so many people here that were that were ready. I mean, they were having a great time, no lights. Uh, they moved cars and trucks around so they could, could see y'all. That's why this school is our week three winner of the Spirit Stick. I think the whole town is right here. It didn't matter that we drove into town and there was no power. This place is dark. Everybody got here. We're in the parking lot now. We're going to give these guys the Spirit Stick. Take a look at these fans on a typical Friday night during football season. This is what school spirit looks like. Finally, the lights came back on, just in time to officially award not just the school, but the entire community the spirit stick. 
Miguel De Leon is part of the Golden Tornado tradition. It's great seeing all these people supporting the school and the football team and how everybody just goes out and does their thing on Friday nights and pretty much every day out of the week. It's why Principal William Kennedy is so passionate about his job. And it carries over into everything that we do, FBLA, 4-H, basketball, whatever. That, I think that pride and that feeling you have about what Haynesville is supposed to be, it, it carries over into those other things. As senior Danielle Punch puts it, this town knows what they're doing. We see that if you support them, that, you know, we have good results. I mean, we won 15 state championships, so, I mean, it's got to be doing something for us. Morgan Thomas, NBC6 News.